Alrighty, guys. Welcome to the first YPN podcast of the year, 2024. Can you believe it? Already. I'm so excited. Um, if you guys don't know me, my name's Christian and my co-host here, Jen. The, Jen Hernandez. The president. And um, we have some people who are going to show some amazing benefits and amazing products that the MLS and GAR provide. Um, I'm super excited. Um, I got my glasses on so I can uh, nerd out because some of these are awesome. You know, I have a lot of friends and peers who are in the industry in different states and different communities. And um, one of the one of the best parts about um, GAR and our MLS is there are so many options. There's so many programs, so many resources, and and I definitely love that. And so. Um, if you guys are watching this, make sure you get a pen and write down some of these things because there's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about. I got mine. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. It's all up here. <laughs> all yeah. of it. No. Um, so let's go down. This is Tigo and Richard, if you guys mm -hmm. could introduce yourselves. You go first, Richard. All right. I'm uh, Richard Givens, Executive Director for Southwest MLS. Tigo Venturi. I am past president two times of Southwest MLS. Um, I am current uh, 2024 past, media past president, um, been involved in the real estate tech space. I'm a broker, uh, team owner. Um, anyway, yeah, we will. We'll, so so this is this is the nerd show. <laughs> Just get everybody ready. <laughs> no, actually, this is real estate nerd stuff. And, you know, Richard and I are pretty passionate about it. And in providing, you know, tools that really make our jobs as brokers easier, more efficient, and be able to better serve our clients. So, you know, when we're looking at different tools to bring into the MLS, which which we do a lot, Richard, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the, the criteria is like, okay, how's it gonna benefit the member? And ultimately, how's it gonna benefit their clients and their consumers mm -hmm. in the end? So that's what we're gonna go through. Yeah, absolutely. And just, you know, shout out to the, to the you know, our tech committee and our board of directors who vet this kind of stuff for us, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shiny pennies in real estate. Uh, and there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that have AI tagged onto it right now. And, Especially you know, the tech now. committee and the board of directors all go through these products and vet, you know, what's actually going to be useful to the member and what's just, you know, the flavor of the week. So, um, so definitely a shout out to those groups. Awesome. I just joined the tech committee and I'm super excited, but yeah, yeah definitely a lot of shiny pennies and a lot of ADHD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alrighty. Sure. So, um, we want to go over a few products first. So, um, I know Tigo has, um, a page set up that's, um, on the MLS's website, there's a section products and support, and it kind of gives a, a little rundown of a lot of those resources, um, that the MLS has. Um, so which one do you want to start first? Richard, do you want to start with? Let's start with just Flex, which is yeah. Flex MLS or FBS, which is which is the company um, um, that, that basically built um, Flex MLS, and, and that kind of it kind of starts every every everything starts there in our world, right? In our tech world, basically. So. What is what is Flex MLS? Yeah, so Flex MLS is the primary MLS vendor for for our database. So what the uh, and what the MLS does at its core is data aggregation, compliance, and syndication. That's the three things that we're best at. So the data aggregation starts with the data that the members are entering into the MLS. So that comes in from the ad listing screen. Uh, there's also some other places that we ingest data from. Like when you are entering a listing, you'll notice that you have the auto populate. You know, that's bringing in data from county records. Uh, when we're looking at other ways to bring in more data as well. Then once it's in, of course, we have the, the foundation of the MLS is that we have 4,300 people who've all agreed to abide by the same rule set. <laughs> and that's, that's a kind of a miracle in itself. And you have all the compliance around that, clean up the data, get it ready for, for distribution. And then we have the syndication part, which goes out to somewhere between 800 to 1,000 websites across the internet. I want to talk about compliance real quick. Yes. I, I know I hear people go, oh, I got a nasty gram from MLS <laughs> because I didn't blah, 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 blah. It's like, the, I, I get that, right? I felt that way, right. right? And I know, I know better. But I've felt that way. We guys probably have seen that, right? And you go, oh, what are I, you know, they're always picking on me because I did something. The thing is, w as brokers, we need a reliable source of information mm -hmm. about properties. We need to know what it sold for, when it sold, what the 
attributes of the property were. Right. And that's what that's all that that is about is to just keep this data accurate because we need to be able to trust it currently and in the future when we go back and are, are doing CMAs or whatever too. So, yeah. yeah d- if just understand. It's it's all part of the cooperative that is the MLS that we all agree to to do the right thing and, and do accurate data. You mentioned something um, into the future. This is data that we keep forever, basically, and mm-hmm. so that's another reason why it's so important. Especially when I'm entering everything, is I have to remember this stuff is historical mm-hmm. and this is what everybody in the future is using, and we're using everything from the past. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the thing I always talk about is you know, so you get a purchase agreement accepted. Congratulations. The, the marketing piece of the MLS at its job. Now what? You have to get an appraisal, right? So now you're now relying on every single person who entered accurate sold data previous to you. And then you need to be thinking about that when you're closing yours out, that somebody in the future is going to be relying on your data as well. So the, you know that, that compliance piece is absolutely what enables an efficient marketplace is, is what I always say. And without that, Lord knows what we have. And you know, good luck getting an appraisal done without accurate data. One thing we, Jen and I were talking about earlier today was, okay, you put a listing in, you go active in the MLS. What happens? What, what, what's all the moving parts in the mm-hmm. background, and how does it end up on all these different websites? And, and you told me we have, what, seven, 800 different websites mm-hmm. that, that properties get syndicated to, Absolutely, right? Yep. You, do you want to explain that a little, Richard? Yeah, so th- there's a couple of different ways that data goes out from the MLS, but the primary one is a system called Trestle. Uh, Trestle is an API that – it's not on the products page. Um, it's it's, yeah, it's an okay. API that um, ingests all the data from the MLS and then sends it out. So Trestle ma- helps us manage you know, our licensing agreements and all the contracts and things like that. And it provides the data to those end users via an API. Um, and then, you know, th- that can be anything from a website like Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com. It can be things like – uh, it can be products that brokers sign up for, like Teradatum or Top Producer or all these different products. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that our data is is then syndicated out uh, to be used by this wide range of uh, data consumers. So one of the things um, that that I think people don't recognize is when you put a, a listing and you go active in mm-hmm. the MLS, not coming soon, but when you change it to active status, there is a whole series of things that just start happening in the background, right? Oh, yes. Um, and one of the things I've, I've recognized for years now is if you make a property active in the MLS and you don't have photos right, you don't have, you're not putting your best foot forward, you don't have a good property description, property remarks, mm-hmm. when you go active that first time, you are shooting yourself in the foot because first off as we know right all of our clients that are set up on some sort of you know drip campaign for new listings they're getting those in their inbox and if you don't have a photo with it with it guess what it's swipe yeah Mm -hmm. yeah gone right and if you don't have a good property remarks description they're gonna go you know whatever so Mm -hmm. so man and, and the thing I've noticed over the years, I mean, it's it's better now, but 10 years ago it was pretty bad where if you made a change to a property after you've gone active, it actually getting updated on all those websites mm-hmm. is a challenge. Yeah, like, like you're talking about like first impression to the consumer, but first compression, first impression matters to a computer too. Like the, the most accurate time that any website gets their data is the first time they get it from you. And, and the example I always use is like, so, you know, if, if a website receives a listing from us, they have 200 columns of data, right? So if I walk up to you and I just dump a thing of 200 marbles on the table in front of you, you know where every single one of those marbles came from. But now I'm going to make you turn around and I'm going to take one marble away and replace it. And I'm going to tell you to tell me which marble got replaced. That's much harder, right? So that's a, that's the thing to keep in mind is that first impression matters to the server also. Um, so you definitely want to have as, as much of the listing perfect the first time as you can because there's no guarantee it's going to update uh, properly. Yeah, so I mean that's just a, a best practice that I think people need to recognize is get it right the first time. Get the order of the photos right the first time. You know, I have my own beliefs on that and we're not going to go down that road. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there, there are best practices in how you actually load those photos into mm-hmm. that into that uh, the order that they come up when mm-hmm. people's looking at it online 
So anyway, that was kind of a little bit off topic, but I think it was important because I don't think people recognize all the machinery that's happening and running in the background when you when you put a listing in. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> All righty, let's go down that list. Okay. So that's MLS. MLS is something, uh, Flex MLS is something that we use um, every day. I know every time I use any of these resources, I go to guard.com and click Flex. Mm -hmm. yep. um, mm -hmm. So go let's ahead. go down to the next one. Yeah, let one. me pull it up on the screen here. So, oh, you know, when you're, when you're logged into Flex, which, which I'm logged into my account here, if you're, if you're online watching this online, but, you know, there's a products tab under the menu, and you can see the list of all the different tools that there are. Um, you know, connections to uh, forms programs like Dot Loop, Sky Slope, Instanet, right? We've mm -hmm. got those. That's just an integration, right? We've got um, Remind, which is our tax database product. We've got RPR, which is our realtor property resource, which is a whole mess of information mm -hmm. <laughs> from public to private to all types of stuff, right, about properties. Um, and then we've got InfoSparks, my favorite, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is a market data product. So mm -hmm. anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Christian. We can kind of go through the list here. So, so I just wanted to show show the list. Yeah, and one thing I want to note too, um, what I really love about the way um, everything's structured is most of those things are um, single sign-on. So um, you don't have to be memorizing um, 30 different passwords as for a lot of these. You don't have to be creating accounts if you're logged in it should um, automatically log you in. I think he just pulled up Remind, so that's one of those. Um, I love Remind as well. It's one of the things that I um, use probably the most out of all of the different resources. Um, so let's chat about Remind. Yeah, yeah so, you, so, so yeah. to start with, like, so, so Tico mentioned both Remind and RPR, and, and both of them do very similar things. They both are kind of a data aggregation service from multiple different places of public record. The way, the way I separate the two is what I think they're good at. So um, if uh, what I think Remind is best at is, uh, of course, just getting your tax data, but also prospecting. Uh, it, has, it has a lot of really useful overlays and things that you can use to sort data. You can do things like look at a neighborhood and see, and see a range of mortgage rates or age in the home or if they have a mortgage or not. Uh, it, it, that's a good place to look for distressed. Um, things like that. So that's where I think Remind really shines. And then you know, and then RPR's real shine, and we'll get to it in a bit, is um, reports and then like demographics and uh, neighborhood data. Um, which Remind has that. It's just, I think I think some each product operates a little differently. Yeah, I, I, I think just as a user, um, Remind, if, if I'm just trying to figure out a property, like in, in fact, just this morning, we were trying to find a property for a client that you know, owns a property somewhere in New Mexico and they don't know what it is and where it is. They've got a legal description and when they are inherited, right, as vacant land, of course. And, but, you know, we were able to find the property between Remind and tax records and, and track it down and, and been actually then able to actually get, get information. Um, the, one of the, the, the things I really like about uh, Remind is you can come in here and grab a, a property. You can pull up the property um, detail page, and you can create a, a single page uh, printout of, with all the tax data on that property. If it's been on the market or not, you can print it out. And, and I always say is, you know, when you're going on a listing appointment, Go to RPR, print out the single page, not RPR, I'm sorry, Remind, print out the single page record that shows, you know, the tax information, at least what, what what's out there and mm -hmm. you have it. You can also get that from from RPR as well. Mm -hmm. And so th that that's a really simple tool to basically show that you've done a little <laughs> research about you know, this property that you're going on a listing appointment for. Mm -hmm. I agree. And speaking of prospecting, um, one of the reasons why I love Remind so much is because there's so many prospecting tools. Um, one of my favorites is, say I'm trying to farm a neighborhood or I'm trying to do some research on that and reach out to potential, potential clients. And um, it's really easy to choose a block, choose a section, 
and um, you can export all of that data. You can export the addresses, you can export names, phone numbers, um, and you get to see who's on the do not call list. Now I always suggest check it anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, There's resources to check do not call lists uh, and updates and everything, but um, it gives you a good idea on that. And even down to mailing labels, there's a format where you can just print out on an Avery sheet and it has um, all of the addresses, it has the property property owner, you can um, just print all that and send out if you're farming your neighborhood. A lot of companies, I know title companies and lenders will do that for me, but sometimes um, when I'm in a rush or I need to get something done right now and I have my computer in front of me, it's just easy to just quickly and do it. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what it looks like because I've seen you on there. <laughs> Did you make that sound too? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the one thing I always like pointing out about Remind because we get this question a lot is the stuff that Christian was just talking about, the way it works is you pick the listings and you add it to the cart. The number one piece of feedback I get from people is that they're scared to click on the word cart because they think they're going to buy something. <laughs> um, so that's not the case. Cart is just a collection of listings within Remind. So don't let that scare you. Um, if you go deep enough, there is a way you can pay them to do the postcards for you and then you're buying something, but it makes it very clear. You're not going to accidentally buy something. Um, so yeah, just look at that as, you know, the cart is the collection of listings that you're going to do something with. Yeah. And you can have multiple, I know for, um, when I was helping some peers of mine, I would have, um, one cart for this neighborhood, one cart for this neighborhood with, um, paid off houses, or I had this cart was, um, this neighborhood with, phone numbers that were not on the do not call list. So there's so many ways to to do that. And it's pretty easy. It exports in any way you want. I think one thing that's important to point out about Remind and RPR is it is a combination of both public record data. Mm-hmm. So, so county records, which we know are notoriously, <laughs> maybe that's not always nice. perfectly <laughs> accurate. Again, back to the whole idea that the MLS is the premier place for accurate data about real estate right mm-hmm. and 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 so it is a combination of what the the tax records say as well as what the MLS says as well as they do actually do a little bit of um, extrapolating and kind of coming up with some ideas of what they think it might be mm-hmm. based on the neighborhood and composition and other stuff too yeah absolutely so. and then even like going over to RPR like um, you don't it, it's more than just I thought MLS data like something not a lot of people realize is like New Mexico MLS, the one that kind of covers all of New Mexico that doesn't have an MLS, their data is an RPR for us. Um, so, and, and you know, we actually share our data, our public data nationwide, and we're willing to reciprocate with people, and a lot of them do, but, um, you know, so you have more than just your selfless MLS data in there as well. That's yeah, I think that, that so yeah, we're, we're, we keep mixing between RPR and yeah. Remind, and I know it gets confusing. <laughs> they are very two distinct different products and have, like Richard said, a little bit differences. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that's cool about RPR is it's nationwide. Mm-hmm. You can look up a property anywhere in the country and get some, you know, at least the public record data. And maybe, you know, if there's some MLS information that is in there, you, you'll get that as well. I agree with that. That's um, one thing that I've done. Um, Now I always recommend, um, especially if you're dealing with customers outside of your area, stick to what you know um, and refer out if you need. But it's a great idea, great way to to find quick information, names, verify some stuff. And when you're referring out and you have um, more details to give to that um, that broker or agent, it's it it really helps and and can add value to yourself. Christian, have you used RPR Mobile? I have not. You know. one thing we get we get dinged on sometimes here at the MLS is we don't really have a, a great mobile platform and Flex's M- mobile app is, tough. is <laughs> it's, for now know, it's, it's okay it's work it's in not progress great. <laughs> however <laughs> um, RPR's <laughs> mobile app is really good and it gives you real time data you know giving you a use case you're 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 showing a house. And there's a house across the street or something, and the, your client says, "Well, what's up with that house?" Well, you can just you can go right to RPR. You can pull up that property and actually get information. Again, public record information. If there's any any uh, past sales or anything like that, you can pull it up, you know, on the fly on RPR Mobile. So this is your time to download the RPR app. It's on the screen. <laughs> if you're watching on computer, the QR code. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you, and you know another thing, like talking about how the did nation- you do that? I think you did it. I think I didn't no. do that. <laughs> <laughs> that. 
<laughs> our PR is apparently reading your mind. Oh my god, um, <laughs> Gabe, did you do that? Uh, it just Matt, oh, I mean it's, it's my sign, computer guys. so <laughs> everyone yeah. download the app now okay. AI yeah, I'll track you no but, but, but when you're looking at nationwide data another way to look at things is like so say somebody's coming from Atlanta you know you can go look at the Atlanta market and see what they're used to and compare that to our market you know, so you're like, okay, well, you're used to seeing, I have no idea what Atlanta prices are. You're used to seeing a 2,000 square foot home for $500,000. Well, here it's only $300,000, you know, no clue if that's correct or not. But, um, but that being able to compare that nationwide data and so you get an idea of the frame they're coming from, I think is important too. Okay, so we did, so we've talked about Flex MLS, which is kind of the core. We've talked about Remind, which mm -hmm. is a kind of a plug-in separate product, tax record data, a lot of information. Um, RPR, which is also tax record data, market stats. Um, you can create CMAs in there as mm -hmm. well. You want to show the, uh, one of the reports? Um, like, let's put like a seller's report. <laughs> <laughs> Might take a moment. Their, yeah. rep their reports are uh, notoriously uh, long. Yes. Um, let me just see if I have any saved here. You can but, do the seller's um, report and just put my. Oh, there you go. You have one. I can just pull up a sample here. So this is a sample of a, of a seller's report. Yeah, like one of the things that I like about the seller's report is, you know, you go in, you enter an address, and you just click, you know, run report, essentially. And it's like an 80-page report. I mean, you can go through the check boxes and take stuff out if it's too much, because it is too much. Um, but it's it kind of gathers all that information in one place for you. So you're getting, you know, if it, if it was on the MLS, you're getting that. You're getting your demographic, market information, neighborhood information. It pulls a bunch of comps for you. It pulls just an absolute ton of data. And that's one of the things where I think RPR really shines is those reports uh, because it just makes it so easy for you. you know, I, I like those that. heat maps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the things that I do every time I have a property, whether buying side, selling side, I always create a Google Drive with all my files where I can throw everything in. And I do download um, this report. I have it everything checked. And of course, it's a huge file, but um, that way it's always accessible because I know it has so much information and I can always refer back and go back if somebody um, has any questions and they need a, a heat map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can I can go up there I and look that. at it and say, you know what? Absolutely. Let me show you right now. <laughs> Neighborhood economic stats and charts. So there you go. You know, yeah. so yeah, the, the demographic data, which of course we as practitioners have to be very careful about <laughs> that and be the source of the source. source Don't the be the source. source. Um, but you can provide this information. It's just you know straight out of census data. Absolutely. So I love that. Um, Remind and RPR are very powerful tools. Um, the next one I think we should just touch on a little bit is Forewarn. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that's been out for a while, but I always promote it and I always like to add it in because it's something that I am amazed to have, I love to have, and it makes me feel safer in this industry. Yeah, so Forewarn is, it's, it's Primarily a safety product, and, and the point of it is that you know you get a call from somebody. It's a it's a pro, it's a potential client. You can just go into Forewarn, search their phone number, and you can get their criminal property, vehicle, and phone histories. Um, which, like for example, you know if you put it in, it comes up with nothing. It's a pretty good chance it's a burner phone, right? I mean, not always. Some people just change their phone number a lot, but it's a pretty good chance that it's a burner phone, which means it's a pretty good chance it's a scam. Uh, and then like criminal records, like anybody, you can go on the, the Bernalillo County Clerk of Court and look up somebody's records in this one county, but how many counties are there nationwide? Like 8,000, you know, so you get a nationwide criminal search so you can get an idea of who you're working with, right? Um, and then there's all there's an, there's another way you can search. I can I know you can do name and birth date, and I think address is in there as well in the advanced search. So that's the primary point of it because boy, there's a lot of scams out there right now. Well, and the th the thing when we first looked at this product, gosh, it's been years ago. I think we started looking at this in 2020. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was in pre-pandemic. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we we recognize that all this stuff is available out there. It's all public record data, right? It's not like we're getting secret data. It's just that they've consolidated and brought it all together and made it very simple to search because all you need is a phone number. Because mm -hmm. remember, like you know, the the all the different databases online, and you got to pay for them. And you know, is it real? And you know, it, you know, the people search databases, which we all used to use because we didn't have forewarn. Right, so yeah, it's it's. Uh, I I can't imagine you know meeting with a new client without running their phone number through here. Yeah, 
I agree. And I think it's definitely one thing. It's again, it's those dollars that you spend. It's going towards helping your safety, helping, helping you build your business. And, and so I definitely recommend signing up. Um, if you go to gar.com, um, and search for Warren, there's an article that shows you how to easily sign up. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, and it's a piece of cake. So I definitely recommend that. And actually the page that TO's on right here, the products and support page on uh, southwestmills.com right there under resources, the top link, it says sign up here. Perfect. And all you gotta do is go there and enter uh, the, the same email address you have on file with GAR, and then it'll pick up the fact that you have it and sign you in. Um, and this is something that if it was not offered as a benefit is normally $20 a month. So, I mean, that's $240 a year of value that we're providing right there. And I used to buy it before, mm -hmm. when, when, I, when we first got this demo and I was on tech committee at the time, I went back immediately and bought it. <laughs> because I just wanted to have that tool for, for safety for our team. And, and then of course, and, and actually let's address that. I, I think this is a really important point because I, I keep saying that the MLS is a co-op, right? We're a mm -hmm. cooperative, right? We're a bunch of brokers, 4,400 that get together and say, okay, we're all gonna work together. Well, what we can do as this cooperative, we can go out and buy this product at pennies on the dollar and offer it to everybody versus everybody having to go out and buy it individually mm -hmm. for $20 a month, right? Yeah. So, Economies of scale definitely help. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so that, that's a big deal. Um, and then let's just ad address the, the do's and don'ts in that this is not a prospecting tool. Yes. <laughs> this is not a prospecting tool. This is, <laughs> this is a safety tool. Right. And if you use it inappropriate, you will get kicked off. Yeah, Forewarn does have a compliance team that keeps track of what people search. So if you start searching celebrities or politicians or any of those kind of things, they will reach out, slap you on the hand and disable your account. Um, and same deal, you know, if, if they see you running a whole bunch of numbers and they can tell you're like going down a number list because you're using your prospecting, same deal. Don't use it for that. It is a safety tool and a safety tool only. So don't search yourself every day. <laughs> That's what they're asking, what they're saying. Um, I love it, and um, and information is key. Information is so valuable to us. Um, so I'd like to go into our next one, which is another favorite of mine, InfoSparks. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're speaking my language. <laughs> uh, InfoSparks is a product we get from. I'm going to pull out. I've got it pulled up on my screen here. This is. Um, uh, if, if you're watching online. So this is um, the, the back end of InfoSparks. And when you're, when you're in the MLS, you can, again, go to products and it's right there. Click InfoSparks, it'll bring you in there. Mm -hmm. But there's actually kind of two products in one here. Um, InfoSparks is a interactive market data product that is updated every month. So on the first of every month, you're gonna get everything for the previous month. So mm -hmm. it's monthly data. Um, and then we also have Fast Stats, which is also an InfoSparks product. It's just a little bit different. Um, Fast Stats is, is also in the same place, and it can give you more of a um, consolidated report by, let's say, an area, like a, a zip code, mm -hmm. uh, an MLS area, a city. And in how I said, you know, like you can go to Remine and print out a one page report, you know, with all the county information about a, 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 an owner's property when you're going on a listing appointment. Well, you can do the same thing here. You can come in and run a, a single page report for the, uh, let's say, a particular, let's see, let's go ahead and run. I'm going to pull up uh, Ladera 111. Um, and you can get a single page report that is up to the most recent month that we just passed. So in this case, we're looking at December, 2023. And it gives you a summary of everything that happened in this particular uh, MLS area. Again, you can run it by zip code also. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you just spent a whole bunch of time doing research. And that took me, what, 10 seconds mm -hmm. to, to, to click it. And it shows you, you know, how many listings there were, what the average days on market were. Um, I, I always tell the story when I'm training as, I remember going into a listing apartment, this is years ago, this is probably 15 years ago. Went into a listing appointment, it was in high desert, and you know, we we're doing our normal, you know, listing appointment, it was actually Tracy and I, both of us, and doing our normal, you know, song and dance and telling what we do and how great we are, you know, which we all do in listing appointments. And the, and the owner said, you know, what's the average days on market for here? And we both looked at each other and went, uh, I don't know. And, and I, from that day on, I was like, I am never gonna not know the answer to 
just basic questions like that when I go mm-hmm. on, you know, when I'm talking to somebody about real estate. And so, yeah, this is the type of stuff that you can you can uh, get. Um, so, and the way I differentiate fast stats from InfoSparks is like fast stats is it's the general information already done for you. InfoSparks is what allows you to like really drill down and then custom do do whatever you're looking for. Yeah. And that's a good d- distinction between the two. Yeah, InfoSparks. There's a lot here, and I'm not. We're not going to do a training on it here today. But if you get in there, you'll see you can you can zero down by location first off. Mm-hmm. So you can do it again by zip code, MLS area. You can create your own areas using a polygon map and draw your own areas. Um, and then you you've got a bunch of different sorts where you can sort it by price range. You can sort it by property type. You can sort it um, by either resale or new construction. Um, and then you've got every you know metric that we track from from you know sale prices to average price per square foot, number of listings, homes for sale, closed sales, and so on and so forth. Um, and then you can even do comparison. I'll give you an example here. Like right now, um, if, if you're not watching, but we're looking at the entire MLS area. We're looking at single family detached, and I'm going to click both previously owned and new construction. And then I'm going to click this arrow, and it's actually going to give us a comparison of the median price for new construction versus resale and you can see the difference between them so that's just an example of of you know how granular you can really get on this Mm so um there's way more to it and you can print out reports very you know just a single page report with with certain data you can also create an embed and put it on your website which which i have a ton of these on my website with with all different information Mm -hmm. um and it's automatically updated every month when the when the data updates yeah and the basic idea is criteria of what you want to narrow down across the top statistic you want at the bottom is yeah. essentially what you need to know. Yeah. And then of course there, you know, I do have training videos out there about this. So go check out the Albuquerque Realtors YouTube channel and there's there's trainings that go into a lot more detail. I love InfoSpark so much and um, some ways that I've used it in my business, um, I get that question of like, what's the market like here? What is, what's going on in my neighborhood? And um, you can be that person, you can be that broker that has the information, whether you are um, calling, speaking to your sphere, whether you're door knocking and somebody asks, well, well, what is it like out there? Well, you can give them not just the details that are in your email inbox every month of the Albuquerque market or the state, you know exactly that zip code, that street, that everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also used it for um, for doing CMAs and pricing some really tough properties when it's it's really I don't have as much data out there. The MLS may have not uh, might not have as much data there. I can I can look and see what the trends are, and I can see um, how much has this zip code increased in the past twelve months, the past twenty four months. So I can um, forecast, um, and so that's one of the one of my favorite tools. Definitely is. Is this? I love data, so I love stuff like this. Charts are my I've, favorite. I've, I've, I just brought up the most shocking chart that, that we're, we're dealing with. We were just talking about that the uh, annual um, market stats just came out for 2023, and I just brought up closed sales. Mm-hmm. And what I did is we have the option to do a 12-month rolling. And so what we're looking at is a 12-month rolling uh, average uh, f- for the previous 12 months, and we're down – 18 percent from 2022 in the number of closed sales residential closed sales we've had in in the albuquerque area Mm -hmm. um and it's a very very you know you think about we went from sorry we're getting way off track here but i love it we went from (laughs) a peak in 21 where we ended up at just shy of 14,000 sales Mm, so that's you know whatever 28,000 sides we're just looking at residential resale or residential uh, detached right now to this year uh, just just at 9,000. So mm-hmm. pr- pretty big drop in the last few years and we've all felt it and and but you know what there's still 9,000 people, you know, 18,000 sides that that happened in 2023 and they'll probably be that or or more this year. So mm-hmm. Yeah, and one of my favorite ways to use data, I know I know Tigo delights in this as well, is using data to debunk anecdotes. Oh man, yeah, no <laughs> you know, kidding. People just kind of had the Fact well, this checking. one time stories, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. And but you know, stories don't make data. That's for sure. So, 
Boy, so. boy, isn't that true? Yeah, I we hear a it. lot of <laughs> anecdotal uh, market data stuff in our business, and actually, that's why I started digging into market data so much because I would read stuff in the the journal or other place and just go. Where, where are you guys getting this from? <laughs> right. Um, the next thing I want to go over um, that we have is uh, Property Shield. Yeah. Um, and so I'd love to hear more about this. Some of these we've heard a lot of, like um, Remind and Info Sparks, we see in big giant blocks, but we have other stuff that um, that can absolutely be of value. Yeah. So so Property Shield is actually one of three uh, that isn't out yet. Uh, so we'll, but we can kind of start talking about those. So. Um, Property Shield is a product that, uh, to my knowledge, I believe we're going to be the first MLS to launch it. And what it does is it takes the MLS data and feeds it into their system. And then their system uh, scans the internet for places the listing shouldn't be. So it looks for the listing on, say, Craigslist or on Facebook Marketplace. And it's, it's matching up your photos and or your property data to look for places that it shouldn't be. And then if it finds it somewhere it shouldn't be, it reports it and, and tries to get it taken down for you. Now, um, I this is going to be integrated into the system, but there is a cost for it. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it's like $1.50 per listing per month. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a minimal cost for what you're getting out of it. But it's another piece of us trying to combat all the scams that are out there. Uh, you know, we kind of started that with Rental Beast, which we'll talk about some. But um, this is just another piece of that puzzle of uh, trying to help consumers not get scammed so much out there. Yeah. It's... We, we, you know, anybody that's been in this business for more than three days rec- recognizes there's a lot of scams out there in our business. Of course, it's every business and everywhere, and we know there is in title, and we know there is in, you know, mortgage, and we know there is in, in definitely in the rental world. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's bad. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I probably hear five to eight calls a week here of people <laughs> reporting it, of things happening, and that's just what gets reported. Yeah. Before we go over the the next two that are part of this, um, I want to remind everybody um, that I'm so proud to have Richard here because um, he's helped us and and Tigo and all these amazing people in this room um, have really made have helped make our MLS very forward and and part of the future. And we roll out so many of these amazing benefits and and a lot of other MLSs and a lot of other groups kind of look up to us and and it makes me happy to see all these benefits so i just wanted to give a little shout out before (laughs) we go to the next one (laughs) thank you i appreciate that yeah we we definitely try to to you know move the industry forward you know there's a lot of things that we do like one of the phrases we say in the boardroom quite quite a bit because you know credit needs to go to the board of directors on this as well is we don't mind paving the road for others to drive down later you know, and, and, and that's, that's painful at times, you know, and, it, and, oh yeah, <laughs> and, I've gotten know, those calls. Yeah. It, it, it comes with some bumps. So we, we definitely appreciate our members, uh, patience with these things because, you know, that comes with the cost being that innovative cutting edge sometimes. And we recognize that and we do our best to mitigate it. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's something we're very proud of for sure. Well, and, and I think the, the, the thing I want to just point out between the committees, both tech committee, policy committee, and then the board is, you know, these things are vetted <laughs> extensively, mm-hmm. right? We don't, and, and there's a lot of products that we look at that we just go, yeah, no, you know, this is, if, you know, there's a lot of products out there that, that, that want our business, mm-hmm. right? And um, you know we're only looking for things that really bring value, and I think this property shield is a great value, a great great example of that. And of course, the next one's um, Sphere Builder, mm-hmm. which we're going to talk about, which is going to be rolling out very soon. Um, I'll go ahead and pull it up on the on the website. Yeah. Here so too. while while he's pulling it up, just kind of a basic idea of Sphere Builder is uh, look at it like the credit karma of your social media presence. Uh, the way Sphere Builder works is uh, it'll have a single sign on through Flex and you'll click on it and you'll, you'll give it your information and it kind of gives you a, a score of, you know, how, 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 what does your Facebook look like? What does your Google business page look like? What is your, uh, there's another one, Instagram I believe is on there. Yeah. Um, and it kind of gives you a score of what your social media presence looks like. And then it gives you some tips on things that you can do to improve that. And everything I've said to this point is all free. There's nothing, there's no charge, nothing like that. Now, once you start trying to implement the things that they say you should do, 
they, they're going to offer you content that you can buy, but you don't have to. You can just follow their tips and create the content yourself and use that to improve your social media presence. Yeah, I, I, I like this idea of you know measuring, right? We, we always talk about that in businesses. We have to measure to see where we're at, right? We mm -hmm. can't just throw stuff out there and just hope something happens. We, we put stuff out there, but then we have to me have some mechanism to measure our efforts. Mm -hmm. And with social media, it is a black hole of just throwing stuff out there, right, Christian? And sometimes Absolutely. you just have no idea. And so this is a tool to actually give you a report card on how you're doing if your efforts are really making a difference. Yeah, it's so exciting to see stuff like this hitting different markets like the marketing market and and being able to for us to see what works, what doesn't work and how to adapt and and I think this is going to benefit everybody whether they use it every day or whether somebody just uses it every once in a while having that data and having them know what can what can help you stand out in this market because there are a lot of us but um there's there's so many resources to help us stand out from the crowd and be mm -hmm. yourself yeah th this tool is this is a freemium meaning that you know it's going to be offered for free for everybody and then there are some paid upgrades and you know, like richard said you can buy content if you want to use their content or they have uh, marketing services so if you want to promote an open house promote a new listing. You can do paid ads on social media through their platform. Uh, very similar to what HomeSnap has mm -hmm. or had. I don't know the status of HomeSnap right now, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it, and, and so yeah, that's going to be coming soon? Uh, well, it's. I would give it a couple months. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, still, we're still working on agreements right now, so okay. we're, still, we're still not even really started integration yet. But I, once once the agreements and stuff are done, that shouldn't be a hard integration because there's not really much data going back and forth. It's just kind of the single sign-on. So yeah. I don't see it being that long. So we have time to work on our social media. So when yes. we run it through here, it's going to be like, oh, you're doing fantastic because you've been <laughs> consistent. You're using your SEO and all that good stuff, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a good way to look at it. <laughs> And what's the last one in that group? Uh, um, builders update. Builders update. Builders update. So uh, this is a similar to new home source professional that we have right now, but better. Um, it's, it's a lot more um, pro realtor is one way to put it. Uh, and new home source professional is actually going to be replaced by this. Uh, once we get builders update up and running, new home source professional will be eventually uh, shut down. And essentially, what this product is is it's a a kind of a central source of truth for new construction. Uh, you know, because not every new builder puts every single home they have in the MLS, but this system is more purpose built for new construction. So uh, builders are able to go in and like sell a neighborhood and say, hey, we have this many lots available in this neighborhood, for example. Um, so, and then they, you know, they have a lot more of like their floor plans and things like that in there. Uh, there's already a good number of builders in our area participating. And then of course they'll reach out and get more in there as well. So it's kind of a, uh, you know, creating that central source for new construction to market to the realtors and realtors should be able to provide that data to their consumer. Um, and this is a realtor centric product in the sense that so new home source professional, which we have right now that most people don't even know we have, but, but it is a tool we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anybody can go in there and log in, anybody meaning a consumer. This tool is actually specifically designed for brokers and realtors to invite their clients in. Mm -hmm. And so they can have that interaction with their client while they're doing their home search. It's basically the MLS for new construction. Right. And, and you know, we all know that, yes, a lot of builders get their their product in our MLS, but we don't capture all of them right. by far. Yeah, and, and and you know that's kind of the same thing we do with Rental Beast, where you know the MLS is really built for residential resale. It's really what it's built for. So you know Rental Beast is specific built built for rentals. New. Um, uh, Builders update is specific built for new construction, right? So, because there's a lot of things that in, in the MLS, a new builder may not want to put in there, or they may not want to, you know, close out, or may not want to follow a certain rule. But builders update is built to capture as much information as those people are willing to provide, and then provide that to the realtor and their consumer. Um, and then like, like Tigo was saying, one of the great things about it is for a consumer to get access to this, they have to have a realtor. They yeah. have to be connected to a realtor. So I've got I've got a login here, so I'll pull it up here. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's 
guess what it looks like? It looks like every other home search website in the world. Gasp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and you know, it's got a map search, and you can pull up the properties, and it tells you about, you know, I'm pulling up one from uh, Richmond, America, up there in North Rio Rancho, and, and you know, product they have, um, um, a home they have here. And, you know, so you can see what's going on with what's what they have in their pipeline. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, we all do that where we go to each individual builder's website and we look and see and we call the builders. Well, this is going to be, again, a central source of truth, like Richard said, to just make our job easier. And now we'll be able to share these directly to our clients. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited for this, honestly, because um, especially right now, obviously, everybody knows the data on on housing and, and new construction is a big chunk right now. And having easy access having um an easy way to to get that out there and have everybody have all the realtors have the same information Mm -hmm. i'm really excited for for that and 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 uh and how that's gonna affect everything which um i saw i heard the word um earlier so that's a perfect segue into our our last product that we're going to talk about which is rental beast Mm -hmm. um we just added that recently and and i know we've gotten some great feedback on that and and so tell us a little more about rental beast so the where rental be started at was going back again to this idea of how can we help people stop getting scammed, right? So you think about consumers are going to Craigslist, they're going to Facebook Marketplace, they're going to all these different websites. And okay, why do they have to go there? They don't go there because nobody has created a central source of truth for them to go to, to go to one place and see everything that's available. So we started looking around and you know we found Rental Beast, which is this product that you know, it gets MLS member data. So like right now, if you're gonna add a rental listing, you have to add it into Rental Beast, and then it feeds into Flex MLS through some other industry first that we don't get that nerdy on this one, but. Um, That's the after part. But, but, <laughs> but it also, uh, it well, also- Wait, wait, let me just say, web hooks, <laughs> web hooks. <laughs> yeah, it's-, it's That's just, for you nerds out there. You it, guys know what that means. It's some cool stuff. Uh, but it also pulls in data from anybody in the Albuquerque market that uses a property management system, whether they're a member or not. So if they use Appfolio or Buildium or Yardy, or there's like 37 of them total, I think, then that data also gets pulled in. So the real benefit to the member is, you know, if you pull up a, a, a rented history, like stuff that's already been rented and closed out, uh, you'll see the MLS tab only has about, I think 2000, maybe 2400. The rental beast tab has like 16,000. So it's an absolute massive amount more data that we're able to provide. So like if an appraiser has to do a rental comp as part of their appraisal, or somebody just asks you, hey, how much do you think I can rent my house for? Now you have 16,000 more listings of data to pull that information from. Yeah, and and one thing I I, I wanna um, point out is there's a public facing home search side. Yep. New, it's NM Home Rentals. It's it's non plural also, right? Bo- yeah, both, yeah, bo- yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the technical name is with the plural, but the non plural. Also yeah, yeah. Redirects. So anyway, nmhomerentals.com, mm-hmm. and that'll that'll uh, redirect you to the um, the home search portal where where people can go and just search. So if you've got mm-hmm. you know clients, friends, whatever, looking for rentals, and you know one of the challenges we we've seen with rentals is. Some of them are on Zillow. Some of them are on Facebook Marketplace. Some of them are on Craigslist. Some of them are on you know the property manager's website only. Mm-hmm. Right. The idea is again to have a central uh, place where people can go and find property, and they don't have to you know do the Russian roulette with Craigslist <laughs> and and Facebook Marketplace where it's just full of scams. Yeah, so that solves that consumer piece of what I started off with. They didn't finish there. So thank you, Tico. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're solving it for the consumer, and then we're also giving that more data to the member as well. And then, you know, it's also when you're adding the listing, it's more rental specific than we were before. You know, things like that, there was a lot of fields that were maybe required in residential that you don't care about when you're renting a property right? So it's more rental specific. It has a lot more detail about moving costs and pets and things that matter to rentals, right? So it's a purpose-built platform. Uh, It provides us that more data and it creates that central source of truth for consumers. I think it's so exciting to see all of these products and all of these um, resources that we have. Um, I know... I know every once in a while I go on and I seem overwhelmed sometimes with all of the options, but um, that's why I try to 
try to watch a lot of the videos the MLS provides. I know Richard has recorded so many of them and, and he really makes it easy for, for anybody, whether you've been in the business forever, whether you are brand new and love technology. So some of this can be easier or you, um, don't use a computer as much. There's so many different ways to, to get the information. Um, a lot of them overlap, but a lot of them have their, um, their pros. So, um, I'm excited for the future. I know, um, in a, in a year or two, this list will definitely grow and we'll have some new stuff, which I'm super excited for. Not too much, not too not much. Too much. Well, I know yeah. we, we, cause I hear that, right. It's like, mm-hmm. Oh no, another tool I got to figure out. It's like, no, you don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to just, just know that these things are out there. Mm-hmm. And when you have a need for it, when you hear rentals or you hear new construction, you hear market stats and you're like, Oh, there's a tool for that. Yeah. Let me go figure it out. You don't have to learn it all right now. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, if anybody has a collection of tools, right? I mean, you might have 50 wrenches, but, you know, 30 of them, you only use the one time you're working on a Volkswagen, right? You've you know, in, it's, have you been in my garage? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the same deal. We, we just, we, we're making the tools available to you and they're there for, for your use. And then um, I, I know we focused a lot on like tech benefits here, but I want to do a quick plug real quick also is that we Absolutely. actually put out a member benefits video recently. It's, it's about 34 minutes long of just me talking about all the benefits, all the way from NAR, all the way down to Southwest MLS. Um, so it, you know, it talks about. I think know, Southwest MLS should be on the top of the list myself. I kind of thought that. I'm a little saying. biased, but. <laughs> but you know, but you know, at the national, state, local level, and the MLS, it goes yeah. through all of it. So, so take a look at that because you know this is just uh, really the cherry on top of of what we talked about today. Where can we find that video? Uh, that's also on our YouTube channel. Um, there's been a blog on it. And then this is, uh, by the time this video is posted, it'll be a couple weeks old, but it's going to be the God as a video of the week on Flex MLS as well. So that's exciting. I am so thankful for both of you to come and hang out with us and um, get the glasses on and really go through <laughs> our, uh, our resources and all of these benefits. And um, remember every once in a while, um, go to guard.com. Um, if you have some free time, learn something new. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, and ask your peers. I know anytime I have a question, I just ask somebody in my office or I ask somebody on the Facebook group and say, Hey, um, I need some information about rentals and, and don't be afraid to refer out to ask for questions, anything like that. Every time I have a question, I go to you. (laughs) (laughs) I go to everyone here. (laughs) Um, so thank you guys, um, for listening in or watching the first podcast of the year, 2024 already. I'm excited. Um, I know we posted a little while ago, if you have anything you you want to hear um, anybody you want to see on here and um, anything you want to learn because I love topics, learning questions that you might have anything like that make sure you um, slide in the DMs and message us or um, send us an email um, we'd be happy to 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 grow our repertoire of of what we're what we're talking about That's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time 